Hello, my name is Kara Brown. I am an urban fantasy author and I also write under the name of Faye Black and we are going to talk about info dumping. So before we dive further into the video, I should be clear that I really don't like info dumping. In fact, it's the bane of my existence and I'm not very fond of it when I see it in books. But there have been a couple of instances recently where I did see it and it didn't bother me too much. So I did a little introspection trying to figure out why info dumping in one book was okay but I hate it in another and I wanted to share those insights with you but I also wanted to talk about info dumping, what it was, how you could use it, how not to use it, and so on and so forth. The nutshell version of what info dumping is is when you are telling information instead of showing it in a story and sometimes this comes off as a little bit of a lecture and it's in, well, a dump, right? It's called info dumping because you're getting it all at once. A couple of books do this uh, where they like to give you the history of a kingdom before you dive into the scene. Other places um, I've seen it done and it's it's technically doing it right but it's still doing it wrong where you have a character that's just babbling on about information that they normally wouldn't do and then try to like smooth it over by saying oh I'm just so excited I really wanted to talk about this. Ultimately though um, in the traditional sense of info dumping it's not very interesting uh, it feels like a college lecture like we're expected to take notes and in some cases this is the author trying to show all the information that they learned to show that they know what they're talking about and i can kind of respect it but at the same time it's not really the best way to do it because when you are kind of doing a pseudo college lecture at your reader um, and they came for a story between two people getting together and falling in love you're gonna bore them and if they get too bored they're gonna put your book down and then when they think about picking your book back up they're gonna remember why they put it down and they may not pick it up again and we're not very fond of that so let's try and avoid it now that's not to say that you should not be telling your reader information the trick about it is trying to do it in a way that's kind of interesting and engaging and in some cases you really can't get around not having some kind of um, information shared with your reader Brandon Sanderson in his Mistborn series is kind of notorious for it in all of his books where he'll write about you know how magic works in there. But when he's doing these recounts about how magic works in his Mistborn series, the interesting part is the limitations of it, so what the magic can't do. And the fun thing about that is that what the magic can't do usually ends up being kind of the conflict or the thing that adds tension because we know that the magic can't do that, so we're always like, well, how is this person going to be able to overcome XYZ, right? Some examples of info dumping that's usually seen in a lot of different books are going to be, and I have it written down right here, is going to be uh, how abilities work, magic or otherwise. It's going to be character backstories, it's going to be rules of laws, countries, any of that. Uh, they're going to want to do like introspection on like characters and what they're like. Uh, sci-fi technology and then they're also going to want to talk about like, you know, uh, races, like their traits, why people don't like them and all this other stuff. And the thing is that with a lot of that, you can actually work that flawlessly into scenes by having characters talk to each other. In writing, there are a couple workarounds that you can do with that. And you can, like I said, work this into the narrative. And one of the things that you can use is a writing tool. It's referred to as a talking bob. And a talking bob is a head that's going to bob up and down, right? But this is usually a character in the story that will either know something or ask a question that the reader is going to have. And you can take that and you can work it into the narrative. Um, one of the character characters that come to mind and it's literally Bob the Skull, right? Bob the Talking Skull from Harry Dresden. And Bob the Talking Skull is a spirit of intellect that Harry will occasionally go to when he needs to ask questions about magic or about laws or things like that. And because Harry is the one asking the questions and Bob is delivering it in a concrete way, it's, it's a more of a conversation engagement so it's not very boring. With that said though, I have read some books where it's literally one person talking for pages and pages and pages, right? Um, and my my personal Carol <laughs> rule of thumb is that if you're going to spend more than three paragraphs trying to talk about something, take a look and see how you can kind of make that more engagement. Um, the thing about dialogue and having scenes with dialogue is that I usually try to treat them like uh, sword fight scenes. You know, it's a uh, you know parry, you know slash all the other stuff. Like it needs to be engaging. There needs to be something that's going on. It can't just be uh, I'm going to talk at you and you're going to nod and take that information away, right? So when you're working the dialogue in order to give info dumping, but Bob the Talking Skull is honestly a really easy way to do it. And you can, again, like I said, kind of flawlessly do it. I would just be, again, cautious about how much chatter that you have your Bob doing to explain something. Um, Golden Rule of Thumb by Kara Brown is that if you have to spend more than three paragraphs trying to explain a concept from it by a character, um, you could probably do that a little bit more flawlessly or you can condense it more or find some way to make it more uh, conflict driven. Um, if you have a book with nothing but conflict and dialogue, you'll have a bestseller. That's the that's kind of the gist of it. So 
but like I said before, info dumping is basically the author wanting to give you information so that way the rest of the story makes sense. It's telling, not showing, I'm reiterating that so that way I can move on to ways to show how you can kind of portray this information. Uh, earlier I made a reference about how a race in a story might be portrayed by or is received by the general public. You can actually show that. Um, if you have uh, like some kind of medieval fantasy uh, city and a, an orc comes in, you can literally describe the scene where people are responding to the orc. Maybe two women are whispering about like, you know, what kind of creatures they are or things like that. And your main character is overhearing it and they're forming their own opinions, right? So that way you're not having the author uh, writing from the character's point of view and recounting how works are portrayed and received in the community, you can literally just show it. And that will be a lot more interesting because, again, we, we are reading books to lose ourselves and be immersed in a world, and when you break that immersion in order to kind of give us like a paragraph of like exposition, like it usually like will wreck things. Now there are times when exposition can be interesting, right? Um, and it, it hurts me to say that, but it can be done. Uh, and I, there, Neil Gaiman, I think, is a really good example because he does a lot of telling in his stories. But the thing about it is that when Neil Gaiman does telling in his stories, it's interesting, right? There's like that subtle wit and that turn of phrase and the way that the information is portrayed. Again, it's not a college lecture. It's, it's very conversational. Like the author is literally talking to us and kind of like teasing us with little information. There's intrigue. There's lots of stuff going on in there. There is another book that I read and I'm... I'm on the fence about giving the title because I really don't want to say negative things about authors and the way that they portray because it always comes down to what is interesting for a person, right? Like, I may not like it because of the telling somebody else may, blah, blah, blah. Um, but what I will say about this particular book is that it was a superhero book and it was, I think, published in Canada. So that's, that's my criterion information. And uh, the thing with that book is that the author did telling about scenes and situations that I would have loved to have experienced. And it, but it felt like I was sitting and listening to a college girl talk about her day also. Like there was that tone to the, to the reading. And that, that's a big turn off for me. Um, like in, example, like, you know, they're in the secret headquarters and this main character is trying to earn rapport with the staff that are there. But instead of letting me be able to see it, what ends up happening is she just kind of recounts it in like three paragraphs. And I'm kind of robbed of that experience because I would absolutely love to see a character struggle to earn the respect and the the awe of the people around them instead of being like, yeah, I did this thing. It was like, okay, cool, like, great, thanks. If you think that you might have an info dumping problem, um, these are a couple of solutions that you can try. I already kind of mentioned the talking bob, right, where you have like characters interacting and one's explaining the other, so to speak. Um, if you're going through what you have and you need to get information across, can you A, have somebody on the news reporting on a situation that may be prevalent to what's going on? You can also have that be in a newspaper. Can you have your character overhear gossip while they're walking somewhere? Um, can you hear, uh, was it my, I think one of my favorites is actually the mystery ones where the police officers are explaining the situation, but it's like blunt, like no nonsense kind of way of like, you know, uh, doing the exposition that way. Uh, and then the other thing is like, can you make it interesting if you have to info dump, right? What is your narrative voice? Is it intriguing? Does it engage? And is the topic interesting? Um, on that note, there is a book that I really do really like, um, but it's not very well received, and I kind of understand why, but it's called uh, My Life as a White Trash Zombie, and I absolutely love it because that character does do a little info dumping, but the thing is that the character does info dumping on something that I have never heard of before, which is basically what happens with inside of a morgue, right? Um, everything talking about like what a skull cracker is to like how they do the embalming process and like all of that I was particularly intrigued by that because it's not something that I have common knowledge of right um, And so but again that was very concise information and I was still getting it in a transition um, phase as the character was learning how to work in a morgue so it wasn't even though it was kind of like giving me exposition because I was along the journey with the character while they were figuring this stuff out I was very intrigued but those are my fixes. Um, that is my chit chat on regards to info dumping, how to fix it, what it is, what it looks like, uh, kind of like the common uh, culprits for why it occurs. And I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, what is info dumping for you? Uh, where do you not like to have info dumping? Where do you like to have it? 
Do you want to be like Tom Clancy and just go on for like pages and pages about character that we don't see anymore because it flushes out the world, or would you just like it you know, just to the point and like let's keep the story going? Looking forward to seeing your comments in the comment section down below. If you would like to share this video with somebody, please feel free to. If you'd like to hit the like button too, you can do that too. I won't tell you how to live your life. It would just make me happy. But that's it for me this week. I will see you guys on Friday for the live stream, and I hope you all have a good week. So, bye!